Hello friends, Michael Shanebloom here. I know it's been a while. It's been a while since I have recorded a tutorial for you guys. Uh, the pandemic kind of made me lose a little bit of inspiration and I sort of had to take some time to myself before coming back to editing video and making these tutorials. But I am back, so there'll be some new stuff out soon. And we're gonna start with a tutorial on how to process time-lapse clips by using Photoshop rather than a video editing program like Adobe Premiere, After Effects, uh, Final Cut, you name it, Resolve. Um, this is going to be how to export those time-lapse clips using just Photoshop. It is super simple. It's probably the most simple method I can think of for exporting a time-lapse clip. We're gonna start out with a JPEG sequence. And if you shot your sequence in JPEG, great. You'll be ready to go. If not, you'll need to take your raw files, export them out as JPEGs through Lightroom. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a video on it and I'm gonna link it in the description below so you can follow those steps if you're not sure how to do that. But we're gonna start out with a folder that has JPEG files in it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're here in Photoshop and we're just gonna click on open and then go ahead and navigate to wherever your folder is. I've got this New Zealand clip right here. I'm gonna click on this first image and I'm gonna to wanna to pop down over to image sequence. Make sure this box is selected. Click on open. And then I'm gonna do a 30 FPS. Click okay. All right, so here is our time-lapse sequence in Photoshop. If you've used Photoshop a bunch, you'll notice there's something new here. It opened up our timeline here at the bottom of the screen. This is for video, for time-lapse, for image sequences, and you'll notice it says video group right here in this little, this little video icon. So we can actually play this back clicking the space bar so you can see the time-lapse is playing back. I have a little bit, bit of a black bar here at the top because there was a crop on the video that I did beforehand. So anyways, your, your sequence should not show these this black bar at the top, but we can pop around this timeline, see the different images in the time-lapse sequence. All right, so currently our video is 8K, so if I go to image size, you'll see it's pretty large. Um, and depending on where you want to post this online, you might want to do 4K or 1080p HD, and that's pretty easy to do. We can just go over to image, canvas size, go over to pixels, and then we can change this to whatever number we want. So if you were doing HD, you would do 1920 by 1080. Uh, in this case, let's just do 4K. So 3840 by 2160. Click OK. New canvas, no problem. And you'll notice it cropped into our frame. That's perfectly fine. We just need to free transform this um, to make it fit into the frame. So uh, control T and then convert to smart object. And then you'll see the bounding box on the outside. We can just bring this in. Resize it to the frame. And then it's not showing up here, but if I go ahead and click enter, you'll see the frame show back up. There we go. There is our image now resized. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go ahead and export this. It's very simple. Just file, export, render video. And now it gives us some different options. If you want to go ahead and rename it to whatever you want, set it to your location. Right now it's just going to the desktop. H.264 is going to be your online format, so you can go ahead and use H.264 if you want to put this online, share it on Instagram with friends, or you can go to QuickTime if you want it to be higher quality. H.264 is going to work for what we want to do. Leave everything else alone and then just click render. Actually, while this is rendering, you can see here at the bottom, you also have the option of adding an audio track. So I know if you want to add some music or sound effects to your time lapse um, that you're going to post online, you can do that straight here in Photoshop. You just need to find a file. Obviously, make sure that you're also licensing the music or using it appropriately and legally. Uh, you don't want to get your video taken down because of copyright issues. So anyways, if you do want to add some music, it's pretty easy to do so right here. And here is our time-lapse clip played back, looking real nice straight out of Photoshop. 